Welcome to the Masonic Temple of Pennsylvania, located in beautiful Center City, Philadelphia. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the home of free and accepted Masons of Pennsylvania. So join us for another Lesson on the Road. The Pennsylvania Grand Lodge decided to build a new Masonic Temple in Philadelphia in 1865 after having outgrown the Masonic Hall that was located on Chestnut Street. Right Worshipful Grand Master Richard Vox laid the cornerstone of this building on June 24, 1868. He used the same gavel that George Washington had used 75 years earlier to lay the cornerstone of the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. This amazing structure was completed in 1873. The Masonic Temple is a massive structure built of brick-backed granite, rising three stories. Its footprint is approximately 150 feet on the Broad Street and Juniper Street sides, and 250 feet on the Filbert and Cuthbert sides. The temple is complemented by two asymmetrical towers, the taller one reaching a height of 232 feet. In accordance with Masonic tradition, the granite stones that make up the exterior of the temple were cut squared, marked, and numbered at the quarries, and then brought to the temple, ready to take their place. The main entrance to this magnificent building was designed in the style of 11th and 12th century Norman churches, and the doors behind me are 17 feet tall, 7 feet wide, and 6 inches thick. They are carved in an ornate geometric pattern to match the beautiful stonework of the front of this building. Welcome to the Benjamin Franklin Room. It's named for Pennsylvania's most famous past Grand Master. This space was originally a vestibule for the east entrance to the temple. It was converted to a sitting room, for a short time a museum, and then reverted back to a sitting room. On the walls are portraits of Pennsylvania's living past Grand Masters, and in the east stands a portrait of the current Pennsylvania Grand Master. Here we find ourselves in the Oriental Hall. This magnificent room is on the northeast corner of the building. And it breaks tradition just a little bit from most lodge rooms that are typically found on the second floor. This room is on the first floor because fun fact, it was originally going to be the main kitchen. The decor in this room was modeled after the Alhambra, which is a Moorish medieval palace that can be found in Granada, Spain. The walls are adorned with multicolored horseshoe ornaments and columns, which are then encrusted with foliated geometric relief art. In other words, that's a fancy term for, they're beautiful. Welcome to Gothic Hall on the third floor of the Masonic Temple in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This spectacular room was sometimes called the Asylum, the Commandery, or the Commandery Room. It was designed for the ritual, the storage, and the accommodation of the Knights Templar Commanderies. This room runs on a north-south axis, which is odd because most Masonic rooms run on an east-west axis. Above me, you'll see the sign of the Knights Templar, the cross and the crown, with the motto, in this sign you will conquer. The furniture of this room predates the Masonic Temple itself. It came from the 1855 Masonic Hall that was located on Chestnut Street. Welcome to the Ionic Hall here at the Masonic Temple. The primary decorative features of the Ionic Hall are the 24 Ionic columns set at regular intervals against the perimeter of the room. The columns are treated in ivory white and are highly polished. The walnut furnishings with butternut veneer were actually originally upholstered in blue and yellow striped wool terry. On the ceiling, you see the sun depicted at high noon surrounded by a variety of symbols, all of which represent Masonic teachings. Welcome to the Egyptian Room. It's been asserted that Egypt is the birthplace of mysteries, so therefore Masons have always looked towards Egypt with a particular interest. And it was only natural that the Building Temple Committee, when they decided to give historical themes to the lodge rooms, decided to make one of them Egyptian. And this room is a sensory experience of imagery and color. The large throne-like chair in the podium behind me were brought here from the Blue Lodge in the Masonic Hall on Chestnut Street. The rest of the furniture was made to match. And in 1889, it was the Egyptian room that was the first room in the temple to be wired for electricity. Here we find ourselves in the Norman Room. The architecture and art in this room was inspired by 11th century Rhine River Valley. There are archways around the room that span the ceiling and the window openings. 
There are six life-size images around the room of men dressed in a medieval costume, each one holding a stonemason's tool that has symbolic representation in Freemasonry. One fun fact about this room are the wood accents found on the ceiling. They aren't wood at all. They're actually painted plaster made to look like wood. And the artists use turkey feathers to get the wood grain to look just right. Welcome to the Renaissance Room. This is the second largest ceremonial room in the Masonic Temple here in Philadelphia. In 1906, this room was renovated and a portrait of Joshua the High Priest was added to the east wall. Portraits of Moses and King Solomon can be seen on the north wall. And in 1907, a portrait of St. John the Evangelist was added to the west wall. A huge ley light in the center of the ceiling depicts the seal of Solomon and the sun at high noon. We are in Corinthian Hall, which is the largest ceremonial room in the temple. It's designed to seat 400 brothers for the quarterly and annual meetings of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. The room is about 105 feet long, 49 feet wide, and 52 feet high. The columns, decorated with leaves and flowers, frame elaborate paintings. Corinthian Hall was actually remodeled in 1903 to a more archaeologically correct simulation of an ancient Greek space, with motifs copied from several models, including inspiration from the Erechtheum in Athens. The words fiat lux can be seen, which means let there be light. This model aligns perfectly with the Masonic symbolism between light and knowledge. Here in the Masonic Temple in Philadelphia, you'll see a lot of busts and paintings of very famous Masons. People like the Marquis de Lafayette, George Washington, and Benjamin Franklin. But in the grand staircase, there's a portrait of a lesser known Pennsylvania Freemason that Mr. Graham's gonna tell you about right now. Behind me is a painting of a man named Stephen Girard, who is America's first multi-millionaire. And even by today's standards, he would be considered the fourth richest man in American history. He earned most of his money through shipping and mercantile endeavors, as well as some banking. He also bailed out the United States government by funding a massive portion of the War of 1812. After his death, his will stipulated that much of his massive fortune go towards improving the lives of others, like education, Girard College, and giving medical care to the sick. On a personal note, I actually grew up in Girard, Pennsylvania, a town that was named after Stephen Girard. If you don't mind, I'm going to take a moment and enjoy this painting a little while longer. Speaking of great people, Bobblehead George is a nonprofit that relies on donations from great people like you. Bobblehead George is dedicated to providing unique, accurate, and entertaining educational content to lifelong learners of all ages. And it's through donations from people like Keller Contracting and friends like you that allow us to continue our work. You can learn more at bobbleheadgeorge.org. And don't forget to check us out on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Now let's get back to the tour of the Masonic Temple. Welcome to the Grand Ballroom. This room is 94 feet long, 47 feet wide, and 24 feet high. The floor is covered entirely in mosaic tile. The north wall of this room has four stained glass windows, depicting George Washington, Andrew Jackson, Harry S. Truman, and Theodore Roosevelt, who visited the Masonic Temple in 1902. These four chief executives weren't the only presidents to be part of the fraternity. Other presidential masons include James Monroe, James K. Polk, James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson, and James Abram Garfield. William McKinley, William Howard Taft, Warren G. Harding, Franklin Roosevelt, and Gerald Ford also were Freemasons. Somewhere around here is a small statue of Benjamin Franklin. I can't seem to find it, but we'll find it later, don't worry. So Benjamin Franklin, a Mason, was a keen observer of the world around him. He loved using science to solve problems, and he was very interested in bettering the lives of his fellow man. Franklin is giving credit to inventing some of the following things. The Franklin stove, to help hot gases vent fireplaces. Bifocals, swimming fins, the lightning rod, proving that lightning does strike the same place twice. Flexible catheters, ouch. And words that we use today to describe electricity, like positive, negative, charge, and battery. As someone who loves science, Franklin is very interesting to me. It seems to me that he was every bit a scientist as he was a statesman. 
thank you for joining us for another Lesson on the Road. So next time you're looking to do something a little historical, a bit scientific, and just all around nerdy, come check out the Masonic Temple in Center City, Philadelphia, and everything else that this amazing city has to offer. That's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. We'll catch you next time. Thank you for joining. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you says it? We're splitting it. Thank you for it. Like, I'm the only one that was not in the equation. <laughs> one word at a time. I'm going to do a spin into it like. <sighs> no. I am not going to get this right. Okay. And those are then adorned with. No, no, no. Too, too much adorned. Found in Granada, Spain. No, found in Granada. Yeah, Granada's right. Found in Granada. So every time I see Granada, I think about the car against the perimeter of the room. One take, there it goes. The walnut furnishings with butternut, oh my gosh, butternut. <laughs> I almost said there's golden arches like McDonald's, but there's, well, they are kind of golden, but not real. The ceiling is adorned with alternating patterns of, sorry. The ceiling is adorned with alternating patterns of, or, or uh, it's a lot of words, there's a lot of words in mine. The ceiling is adorned with alternating patterns of orient or I can't, I just gotta change the word. There's so many different styles coming together in this one building all over the place. It's a lot of different like pick a lane. Pick a no, okay. <laughs> pick a lane. Welcome to the stunning grand ballroom. This room is let's start over. Good take from the beginning. This room is 94 feet long, 47 feet wide, and 24 feet or Freak. English sometimes is tough. 94 feet long, 47 feet wide, 47 feet wide, and 24 feet. I think we should just start Okay, that dude, out. I, why is it so tough now? 94 feet long, 47 feet wide, and 24 feet high. Why am I so dumb? 94 feet long, 47 feet wide, and 24 feet wide. <laughs> I had it. I had it the first I time. I will not look at you. Uh -huh. So I don't know, do you want to get B-roll of maybe the statues and of, like, the... <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs>